Hello everyone, this is Herpyderpy, and today I'm actually going to bring you guys a video about team building. And uh, for this video, I'm really just going to be talking about my thought process behind team building and how uh, I approach team building, and hopefully after this video you guys will get a better idea of my reasoning behind a few teams. And I want to do this team building video on uh, a team that I recently made for the PO Underachiever NU Challenge, which is basically a challenge where the six Pokemon on your team have to have an average base stats of 460 or less. So you can have like some Pokemon uh, with a lot higher base stats, like maybe a Rotom Fridge or something like that, uh, which just has like 520 base stats total. But you could you also have to pair that we you know with something with a lower ba amount of base stats, like a Roselia or something like that. So uh, that was the main objective of the challenge to keep it at about 460, which is a pretty uh, lower than average amount of base stats for most Pokemon. So it was definitely a little bit of a challenge. Challenge, had a lot of fun with this so uh, this is my thought process behind the team I made that uh, allowed me to complete the challenge so you're gonna see the six Pokemon on the screen right now uh, it's a Shedinja, Armaldo, Scyther, Roselia, Lipard, and a Rotom Fridge and the, my reasoning behind this team is that I was kind of looking through the Pokemon list of base stats and I noticed that Shedinja had a really really low amount of base stats total so I was like man I think I should use Shedinja because uh, since his base stats are really low, I can couple that with a lot of Pokemon that have really high base stats, and that will give me a pretty nice advantage, I think, if I can play around with Shedinja. So, that's what I decided to do. I decided to make a team that revolves around Shedinja, but I didn't really want a team that, like, you know, I don't really want Shedinja to be, like, the lone survivor, you know, because usually when you have Shedinja on your team, you want to make sure that Shedinja is, like, the only person that lives, and once you take out all the Pokemon on your opponent's team that can hit Shedinja, then you win, right? But I didn't really want to go for that since I figured that most people would have moves that could hit Shedinja. So instead, I want to try to just use Shedinja as a Pokemon that can just force a lot of switches. And instead, kind of make my team that revolves around abusing entry hazards. So that's what I that's the approach I kind of made. Uh, but Shedinja was just a Pokemon that I thought was really good for forcing switches. So I thought I might just do the same for the rest of my team and kind of work around that. So now that I've decided upon making a team revolved around Shedinja, I really need to find some Pokemon that can cover some of its weaknesses. So the first Pokemon I decided to cover its weaknesses is Armaldo, and Armaldo is a really nice candidate since it has access to both Stealth Rocks and Rapid Spin, which is almost non-existent in NU. I think the only other Pokemon that can have this combination is like a Sandshrew, a Kabuto, and a Torkoal. And I really want those other three because two of them are a Violite Pokemon that don't really have much offensive capability. And at least I want some of my Pokemon that have a little bit of offensive capability so I'm not like completely weak. And plus like Sandshrew and Kabuto just would do horrible against a Pokemon like Mischievous with Taunt and stuff like that. So I figured, you know, no go with the Violite Stealth Rock Rapid Spinner people. Torkoal, I just don't really like Torkoal in general. I've never really used one. And I just feel like Torkoal is just way too slow. So I said, you know, forget about Torkoal. I'm going to take Armaldo instead. Armaldo has really nice offensive and defensive capabilities because it has a really nice attack and defense stat. And I'm just, even though I'm going to make my Armaldo more uh, physically defensive, I, can, I still pack quite a punch with my physical attack, which is really nice. So that way I can give my Armaldo like, a move like Rock Blast, which would be really, really helpful against a matchup like against Mr. Viss or against like really annoying bug Pokemon with Substitute, like a Butterfree with a Focus Sash or something like that, you know? So that's really, really convenient for me. So I decided to take Armaldo as my Stealth Rock and Rapid Spin Pokemon, even though it does share a bug type weakness with Shedinja. I felt like that's okay. Now, uh, now that I decided upon my Rapid Spinner and my Stealth Rocker, I need a Pokemon that can set up Spice, because once again, I'm trying to abuse the entry hazard uh, by forcing on a switches with Shedinja. So, looking at the amount of Pokemon that can use Spice, uh, one Pokemon that really stood out to me was Roselia. And what's nice about Roselia is that since Armaldo's already physically defensive, I'm trying to look for a Pokemon that is more specially defensive. And Roselia within the Violet has a really, really nice special defense stat. So, that was, that, that's what really struck to me about Roselia, besides the fact that she has also access to spikes. Also, she's a poison type, which is really cool since I can get rid of toxic spikes just in case Armaldo falls down and doesn't have access to rapid spin anymore, and uh, just in case there's some toxics that might be incoming towards the Shedinja, at least have a Pokemon to fall back to to take the incoming toxic. So Roselia is definitely a really nice Pokemon that can cover that, so I decided to go with Roselia. Once again, uh, one of the biggest problems with this is that 
Roselia also shares some type weaknesses with Sheninja, like fire and flying, so I definitely have to watch out for that. That's a little bit concerning, but nevertheless, Roselia is another really good candidate, and I'm really just going to be using Roselia on my team to take hits for Sheninja and to just set up spikes, so uh, that's what Roselia is for. So, I was looking for more Pokemon that could force switches besides Shininja, just in case something goes wrong. And, I also wanted a Pokemon that could also cover some of the dark and ghost weaknesses that Shininja has. So, preferably, a dark type would be really nice uh, to have on my team, since I can resist both of those. So, one Pokemon that stood out to me was Lipard. And, what's nice about Lipard is that Lipard with Prankster and Encore is an absolute beast at forcing switches. Like, there's been so many times where a Pokemon has been trying to set up in front of my face, or if a Pokemon Pokemon just use Stealth Rocks or a Pokemon use the status, and then I can just go for an immediate Encore and just force them to keep using that move, and they have to switch out, because uh, what's nice about uh, Encore with a Prankster is that you can pretty much outspeed them all the time and lock them into one move permanently unless they switch out. So Lipard is really, really fantastic at forcing switches uh, besides the ninjas, so I decided, you know what, I'm just going to go with a Lipard. And surprisingly, Lipard has actually won a lot of matches for me just on its own because I'm using the Swagger Foul Play combination. And just if you if I get really lucky in a match, like sometimes I can just sweep through entire teams with just Lipard, which is really fantastic. So uh, Lipard is an overall a really good Pokemon to have on my team because it can uh, you no know, take a few hits for Shedinja and it can also force switches just in case Shedinja falls down on accident or something like that. So that's what's really nice about Lipard, and Lipard, like, I don't regret putting Lipard on my team at all, because this thing has been incredibly helpful. So now I was kind of looking through more of the threats that are in NU. I saw that, you know, there are Pokemon like Sock, there are Embor, there's Encino, there's Pinsir, and all these Pokemon are both, are all known for being really, really fast, and all, most of them have, like, a Rock-type move, like Stone Edge or Rock Blast or whatever. So I really needed to find a Pokemon that can outspeed these things and, you know, kind of serve them as checks just in case they try to come in and try to sweep my entire team. I need something that's fast. And I was looking through and I found that one Pokemon in particular that can outspeed almost all of them is a Scyther that's Scarfed. So I'm like, ooh, I'm going to definitely take Scyther because Scyther not only offers me the speed I need to outspeed this Pokemon, but it also offers U-Turn. And that's really nice because U-Turn will give me the momentum and continue to let me switch into more favorable situations, and hopefully that'll cause my opponent to keep forcing to switch as well. And I figured that also is good with the idea of abusing entry hazards. So I figured, you know what, Scyther is going to be a very good Pokemon to have on my team. You know, like, it can definitely counter a lot of the main threats that Sheninja has, and I think that Scyther overall is a very solid Pokemon to have. And last but not least, I was looking, I realized that I really lack a special attacking Pokemon that's fast. And, you know, Roselia doesn't really cut it since Roselia is pretty weak. And I really need something that can hit hard and can hit pretty fast. And I also realized that I don't really have a good answer to some Pokemon like an Electros. Which, which doesn't have any weaknesses, and like a Golurk and stuff like that. So I really needed something that can just be overall, just serve as a really nice special attacking Pokemon. And Rotom Fridge came into mind. And what's nice about Rotom Fridge is that Rotom Fridge has access to Volt Switch. So I have kind of that Volt, Volt Switch U-turn combo going on where I can kind of alternate between Rotom Fridge and Scyther constantly and continue to get my Switch initiative and... Uh, keep me on t top of the momentum. So I figured Rotom Fridge might be a nice uh, Pokemon to have. Plus its stab is ice and electric, which is really nice since I can cover pretty much anything I need and it can hit uh, anything pretty much with neutral damage. So I figured, you know, Rotom Fridge is a very nice Pokemon to have. I'm going to, instead of making it scarf, I'll just give it a choice spec so it can hit harder like a truck. And overall, I think this will give me a lot of advantages so that way I can just full switch, go into a more favorable situation. So that's my team. I got Shedinja, Armaldo, Scyther, Roselia, Flypard, Rotom Fridge. I feel like that's a pretty solid team. And it's clear that there are some really big weaknesses, like I have a very big weakness to Fire and Rock, which is quite obvious, I can see that. But uh, I figure that this might be okay, since uh, when I think about it, most of the Pokemon that are Rock types that are going to be really threatening are things like a Golem or a Rhydon, that's really the only two po rock Pokemon I see that are used. And both of those Pokemon get completely owned by my Roselia, so I'm not too concerned 
about those Pokemon because my Rosalia can destroy them. So that's totally fun with me. And, you know, a fire Pokemon also might be threatening because they could just, like, fire blast everything. But the only fire Pokemon I really see in Enyu is, like, an Embor and maybe a Semiseer at worst. And I think, yeah, those are, like, really the only two guys I see. And both of those... Can, I can just outspeed him with my Scyther, just go for Aerial Aces, I can use my Live Heart. So I'm not really too concerned at all about Fire Pokemon either, since there aren't, it's not that very it's not very common in NU. So even though I have those two big type weaknesses, I think that's okay, since uh, I can really cover for the Pokemon that um, would somewhat pose as a threat to my team. So that's six Pokemon right there. So I feel like that's pretty solid. The average base stats is only 432. So I am in the under the limit. So let's go ahead and start putting moves in Eevees. So Shedinja. Um, I decided not to have Shedinja be a sweeper since I don't really want Shedinja to sweep. Like I said before, I really want my, po my Pokemon to be forcing switches a lot and abusing entry hazards. So instead of giving it like a sword dancing set, I decided to give it a home claws baton passing set. And it might seem really weird at first, but it actually works out very, very nicely, mainly because of Baton Pass. I don't know how many times I've been in a situation where, you know, like, I send out Shedinja to block, like, a Surf. And then I don't know what my opponent is going to do, since I'm not sure if he, they have, like, a Hidden Power of Fire or something like that. So I can just go for one easy Baton Pass, just get out when my opponent switches, and switch into something that's more favorable. And the Baton Pass is so incredibly good on Shedinja for scouting and trying to figure out what uh, hidden powers your opponent has and just overall trying to figure out which Pokemon are on your opponent's team are the best counter to Shedinja. So Baton Pass is a very, very nice move to have on Shedinja. I don't know why more people uh, don't use it since it's incredibly, incredibly helpful. It's like going for a U-turn or a Volt Switch. It just gives me a lot of Switch initiative and keeps momentum on my side and that allows me to force my opponent to switch more often, which is really, really good. So, I also just packed X Scissor and Shadow Sneak in there. Shadow Sneak is only there because I lack priority on my team, and I think it might be good just to have Shadow Sneak just in case something bad happens, so it's kind of like insurance. And uh, plus, Shadow Sneak isn't really fast, so uh, Shadow Sneak kind of makes up for its lack of speed. And X Scissor is there just as my main stab move, since... Uh, I just really want to hit hard at something, so x is there just in case I have to stay in just to go for an easy attack. And my EV spread is, like, the only EV spread you can put on Shedinja is max attack, max speed, because that's the only stats that matter. And I just put, uh, Jolly Nature Synth, uh, I don't really need to prioritize attack, I'd rather prioritize speed so I can baton pass a little bit faster. So, uh, that's Shedinja, that's really all I need to explain. I mean, Focus Sash is there because it gives the insurance just in case I make a mistake. Like, if there's a random hidden power flying on, like, a Magikarp or something, then at least I'll have a little bit of insurance just in case, you know, something bad happens like that, or I make a misprediction. So, that's pretty nice. I don't really need Lumberry since... You know, if they try to go for Toxic, I can always go into Roselia, so I'm not really too concerned about that. So that's Shedinja. So moving on next is Armaldo. And like I said before, I want Armaldo to be my Stealth Rocks and Rapid Spinner, so I gave it Stealth Rocks, Rapid Spin, Rock Blast, and Toxic. And this, uh, the last two moves, Rock Blast and Toxic, is really nice since it can deal with a lot of different situations I have to face. More often than enough, I usually have a Stealth Rocks War between Armaldo and some other Pokemon, and Toxic becomes incredibly helpful uh, against these kind of situations. Plus, if uh, I'm predicting, like, their Ghost Pokemon to come in, like their Mischievous, I can just go for the Toxic on the Mischievous, which would be really, really nice. So, uh, Toxic is incredibly useful in those situations, and Rock Glass is just really, really nice just to break substitutes, to break focus sashes, to break sturdies. It's really, really a uh, powerful move overall, and it's much better than carrying a move like Rock Slide or Stone Edge, in my opinion. So, carry Rock Glass, you guys. And, I, like I said before, I want it to be my physical defensive wall, so I gave it max HP, max defense, with an impish nature. So, it can take a lot of physical hits pretty much all day. So, Armaldo, really simple set, you know, nothing too complex or too out of the ordinary. Uh, Roselia. Uh, Roselia, I have spikes. Like I said before, Roselia is going to be my main spiker, and I'm going to give it spikes, leech seed, giga drain, and hidden power of fire. Leech it is there because if I run into a situation like against an Aloma Mamola or like an Audino or another really stally Pokemon, leech seed would be incredibly helpful just to make the stall a little bit easier for me. 
uh, because I don't really have a good answer for a La Mama Mola except for Rotom Fridge. So Leaf Seed would be really, really nice to use to counter the A La Mama Mola. And uh, Giga Drain is there as my main grass type move just to deal with the golems and ride ons and stuff like that that would otherwise like be able to sweep my entire team. So uh, Giga Drain is there, that's just really nice. Roselia has a pretty okay special attack. It's decent enough to pretty much one shot them, so that's really, really convenient to have. Hidden Power of Fire is there because it's really only there for one Pokemon, and that's an Escavalier. Because I ran into a lot of Escavaliers recently, and I just don't have anything for that Escavalier at all. And I, my only answer is to use a Hidden Power of Fire on Roselia, because I didn't really see it coming too much. And if another Grass Pokemon comes in to try to take the Leech Seed, at least I have an alternative answer uh, besides you know, going for Giga Range or something like that. So uh, Hidden Power of Fire is actually really nice on Roselia. I... I'm uh, just gonna. I kept it there for pretty much all my battles since I didn't really need any other move. Sludge Bomb wasn't really that useful to me, so I'd rather just have Hidden Power of Fire just in case a Grass Pokemon or a Scavalier comes in. So, like I said before, Lipard is there to disrupt my opponent, so I really want to prioritize uh, giving it a lot of moves that can force a lot of switches. So, I have Encore, Substitute, Swagger, and Foul Play. Encore, like I said, can force so many switches because. Once they're encored into a bad move like Stealth Rocks or something like that, they have to switch out because there's no way they can stay in against my Liar Party because my Liar Party will win the matchup uh, if they are encored into something forever. Substitute is there because after I encore them and force them to switch, I can make a substitute which will allow me to take a hit just in case they break out of the swagger. So, I, so right after they switch out and I make a substitute, I go for the Swagger, that'll confuse them, increase their attack. If they hit themselves in confusion, that's great, and that will damage them a little bit. But if they break out and hit me, then I have a substitute, so I have a little bit of a backup just in case that happens. And uh, Foul Play is there because Foul Play relies on their attack stat instead of mine, so I can prioritize uh, just going for a Swagger and then going for a Foul Play next turn, which would do a pretty much an immense amount of damage to almost any Pokemon out there. I think the Pokemon I seen take the least amount of damage from a Swagger Foul Play combo is like, I think a Vile Plume. I think that thing only took like thirty percent. That was ridiculous because Vile Plume is probably a really crappy attack. So, uh, yeah, like Swagger Foul Play otherwise can just destroy things. Like I've swept so many teams with just Lightheart. It's actually ridiculous. So I highly recommend you guys try out Lightheart, please, because Lightheart is an absolute monster, and. Uh, I gave it max HP, max uh, speed EVs, because, you know, I gave it max speed so that way it can still outspeed things uh, when it's going for a foul play, since foul play does not count as, uh, does not get prankster, and HP is there just because I can take a few more hits, so that's Lightbard. Now Scyther, like I said, Scyther is Scarfed, he's my main speedy Pokemon to revenge kill things, so I gave it Aerial Ace, uh, U-Turn, Bug Bite, and Brick Break. And, you know, like, it's pretty self-explanatory, I think. Aerial Ace is my main stab, it gets a Technician boost, and is used to deal with many of the fighting Pokemon that typically have Stone Edge, so that's really convenient for me. Like, I've outsped a lot of socks and caught a lot of people off guard because of my Scarf Scyther, which is really nice. U-Turn is there, once again, to give me some Switch Initiative if I don't like the situation, or if I just want to scout things out, or if I want to just scare things out like an Executor or something like that. I can just go for a U-Turn instead of a Bug Bite. And if I have to, if I want to stay in and go for a lot of bug type moves, then I have Bug Bite, which also does get the technician boost, which is really nice. So Bug Bite does it a lot as well. And my last move is Brick Break because that's really only for things like a Cincino. Is like I've used Brick Break a ton on Cincino, and like because Cincino is one of the scariest Pokemon uh, against my team. So having a Scyther with a Brick Break can pretty much one shot a Cincino, and it can outspeed it since it's Choice Scarf, and it's really really convenient to have. So. Scyther is just a really awesome Pokemon overall. It's just, like, definitely my best revenge killer I've ever had. I'm just going to keep it on my NU team forever since it's just such a good Pokemon. And last but not least is my Rotom Fridge. And like I said, I want my Rotom Fridge to hit like a truck and also give me switch initiative. So my moves are Volt Switch, T-Bolt, Blizzard, and Trick. And Volt Switch, to, once again, to get switch initiative. T-Bolt is kind of like the same situation as Scyther, like with Bug Bite. I just want to have a move just in case I want to keep Rotom Fridge in and keep going for an electric move without having to switch out. So T-Bolt's a really nice option. Blizzard is my main stab, even though it's missed a lot, which is really frustrating. Blizzard can demolish so many things, especially with the choice specs. And a Trick is there just in case 
uh, my Leopard dies, I don't have a good answer for something like, oh, I don't know, like a shuffle or something like that. So uh, I have a trick with the choice specs just in case uh, like a Wally Pokemon comes in, I can just break it by just trading items with it, which is really nice to have just in case. So uh, yeah, so since I've prioritized uh, attacking with it, not really speed since Scyther is my fast Pokemon, I just give it modest, max attack, or max special attack, max speed. So that's my Rotom Fridge. And that's pretty much it. So hopefully you guys learned a little bit more about my process of team building. And this team definitely isn't, you know, the best example of team building since this is for a challenge. It's NU. It's not really your standard OU kind of thing. But it, at least it gives you a little bit of insight into what I, what's going through my mind when I'm team building. And hopefully I learned a little bit of something. And I'm going to leave an importable link in the description box. You can go ahead and try it out for yourself if you're curious about this team. And I hope you guys have fun. I'm going to upload some content uh, of me using this team, maybe the game where I broke the 1,250 ranking uh, tomorrow or something like that. So you guys can see it in action. So yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys later.